please welcome to the Amistad Hawaiian Program for the Great State of Virginia, Congressman Eric Cantor. Good morning, Congress Cantor. How are you? You're on the I, set. Maybe I could turn your mic on. How are you? Good morning. Good We're morning. good this morning. Oh. Well, listen, we uh, we wanted to dress up for the in-studio performance with Imus. We're glad to be here. I had no idea you are going to be here, and you know why I didn't? Because I don't pay any attention to what's going on. It says right here on my sheet, <laughs> <laughs> live in your Fox studio. <laughs> like, I'd look at that. No, how's your book doing, Young Guns? Well, you know, the book, the book, <clears throat> the book was something that sort of came about uh, to tell a story uh, that uh, about a project that myself and two colleagues embarked on a couple years ago, and it was a story about how we believe that we are a new Republican Party now. We admit mistakes that were made in the past. We've learned from the errors committed uh, by the current majority in Congress, and we really want to set this country on a new path. And so we went out to seek people to join us in Washington for the right reasons to make the tough decisions that we're going to have to make to get this economy going again and actually get something done. Are you uh, are you aligned with the Tea Party or no? Listen, the Tea Party has been a tremendously positive input, I think, in this election. Uh, certainly for our party, you see the benefit. We'll probably pick up, you know, close to 65 seats at this point. And what the Tea Party did is brought to the fore the emphasis and focus on fiscal issues. People are tired of spending. They want to see government reined in. And they really want to see an America that's focused back on free markets again. That's what the Tea Party is about. It's about constitutional limited government. And they've been a tremendous force and look forward to their continued energy as we get into some of the very, very difficult challenges ahead. Wouldn't it be fair to suggest, though, that uh, the Tea Party is more than just a few nuts with funny signs and funny ants. It, it represents the sentiment of most people who were upset with what was going on, don't they? I mean, even people identify with them. They may not identify themselves as a Tea Partier, but they certainly share the same concerns and feelings they do. I mean, that's fair, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think so. They're like the tip of the spear the, about the frustration. You know, remember, Tea Party, the acronym is taxed enough already. Yeah. People are tired of seeing Washington balloon and the federal government grow in almost every aspect of our lives. And enough is enough, and that's what this election was about, a rejection uh, of the stimulus bill, of the cap-and-trade bill, of the Obamacare bill, all of that. And people want to see a return to some sense of fiscal sanity and balance between the pu public sector and the private. So there were a number of Tea Party people who got elected. I guess a couple of the ones, uh, Christine O'Donnell and a woman from uh, Nevada that she all probably were just as happy they didn't succeed. But um, there are some who did succeed, like, like Michelle Bachman. She'd be considered a Tea Party person, right? Sure. Yeah, I think a lot of our candidates um, worked with, I know I did in my district, the folks involved with the Tea Party. Tea Party is an organic movement. This yeah. is not some movement that started in Washington. It's about the people. And that's what I think the message from this election is going to be about, is get the government in D.C. working for the people again and not the other way around. Well, they're going to want to share in some of the power now, aren't they? Well, yeah, absolutely. But I think what they're looking for is results. They're looking right. for cutting spending. They're looking for a return to a focus on a constitutionally limited government. And they're looking, as well as everybody else, an economy that can start to move again and that we see jobs created in the private sector, not the growth in the public sector we've seen. So uh, John Boehner, he's going to be the uh, new speaker, right? He's going to be the speaker. Okay. So he still smokes, doesn't he? <laughs> Chain smokes. Well, so the president. I don't know if the president chain smokes or not. And then is the number two person going to be you? Well, I'm certainly uh, uh, running for majority leader, and we have an election next week uh, in Washington to uh, to resolve that resolve that issue. Oh man, I, you know you know who that's good for? <laughs> that's good for us <laughs> because we've ingratiated ourselves with you, I think, or tried to, and uh, it just makes me look good. And this program looked good if we backed a winner instead of some loser. Well, I'm, I'm hopeful to deliver on that for it's you. It's like Congressman Peter King, who I was I actually had a hat on and was mean to. On a, so kidding me, but was disrespectful, wasn't that, Charles? Absolutely. And dismissive Rude. because he'd written, you. <laughs> he'd written some of these dirty novels and some other stuff. You know, Not like Jim Webb, but, you know, and then uh, suddenly we see that he's going to be in power, too. So. I've, I've, I've tried to reintroduce sure. myself to him and be nice. He wasn't buying any of it when he was on. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Michelle Bachman, speaking of her, she's she wants to be whatever the number four slot would be 
in the Republican leadership, and you're backing somebody else, right? Yeah, right. Michelle Bachman, she's running for conference chair. Right. And, and the good thing is the members of our conference are going to have a choice of two good conservatives. Right. Uh, I'm backing Jeb Henschelin because I've had a history of working with him. He's a he's a conservative that is going to be able to deliver results. But no matter which candidate or I've, comes out on top, we're going to be served by good conservatives. Uh, and Michelle is a leader in her own right. You know, she is a voice uh, out there to the people. She, uh, we listen to her. Uh, she brings a tremendous amount of smarts and savvy to the table. And, and again, look forward to working with her, uh, whether she is a conference chair or not. Uh, and I, I do think it's reflective of the fact that our party now is growing a new governing majority that is much more diverse. We have many more women in this incoming class, many more uh, minorities uh, that will add to, I think, the strength uh, of our agenda as we get to work in January. Seven to eight women in the House now, right? Something like that, right? Yeah, there's, uh, and, yeah. and unfortunately, the Republican conference is woefully underrepresented in that category, yeah. but now we'll have at least nine, uh, eight or nine new ones, depending on the outcome of a race here in New York. Well, in an effort to stir up trouble, um, uh, she's a, <laughs> Why would you ever do that? <laughs> she's, she, she would, as we've, as we've made clear, she really represents the Tea Party. Well, she, so, she, so if she were to uh, ascend to, to this leadership role, that would be a representative for them that they, they're not otherwise going to have. Well, I, you, you so why know, wouldn't you back her instead of this other buddy of yours from Texas? Well, you know what, I miss? I, I think what the Tea Party uh, is looking for is results. It is a return to fiscal discipline. Yeah, but they want to be participating but I think that, in making a decision about those results. I think if you look at the results of the election, right. when we had 60 plus 61, 62, depending what, on the number now, what you have Republicans the elected. What you have I think the Tea, the tea Party, party I think the Tea Party is has a lot to do with, yeah. you know, the energy that came out at the polls because they're like the tip of the spear. They represent and reflect the frustration that Americans have at what's going on in Washington. She gets characterized by, not here, but by some people for being a moron and not knowing yeah. She's, what people don't know about Michelle Bachman is she has an LLM in tax. She's a lawyer. She is a very competent business woman. Uh, you know, they can think what they want, but she has a tremendous just, amount of intelligence and savvy and obviously a big following. Why can't we get you to back her then this morning here? Well, I mean, again, it was Jeb Henson was in the race. Uh, he is a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, he is somebody who I believe will deliver competent, conservative results. There's probably, if you listed... Um, the people uh, who could run, there's no two better that reflect the common sense conservative vision we need to return to. So again, I think that our members are well served in either stead, uh, whatever the outcome of that election is. Well, obviously, I'm not going to be able to get anything going here, my Charles. <laughs> no, you're trying. I'm talking with Congressman Eric Cantor. <laughs> always, <laughs> kind, <laughs> always, always oh, trying yeah. to stir up the trouble. Oh, of course. Uh, here on the Amsterdam program, <laughs> you know, something that I, uh, I sort of like the president. I don't think he's doing a very good job, but well, I'm not one of those people who hates him. I think he's he's making an effort. It's just not working out. So, yeah. I mean, uh, but uh, something I thought was outrageous, I think, is outrageous, uh, is in being given a speech in Indonesia, and uh, and bad mouth hating on Israel. What do you think of that? You know, I must. I, I share your sentiments. I don't. No one hates the president. I don't hate the president. I think he is certainly someone you can really admire in a historical sense. Uh, I just think his policies are wrong. I think they're wrong for this country domestically, and I think that really what what the issue is internationally, somehow. I don't understand how he wants to push our best ally in the Middle East into a posture of thinking that we're not going to back their security. Uh, and I do. I, I, I think it is very controversial for him to take an opportunity while in Indonesia uh, to slam our ally Israel. And I think most Americans understand that Israel's security is synonymous with America's security. We're in the same war against the spread of radical Islam. Uh, so I'm very troubled by his remarks. Uh, and I'm hopeful we can see a change in course by the White House so that we can get back to this notion that, you know, we stand up to our commitments to our allies. Those who believe in freedom will stand by them, not castigate them in public. I wonder if when he goes to Israel, he'll speak Hebrew. 
<laughs> I don't know. You know, I'm as, I speak a little bit of it, but I have a hard time uh, in conversational Hebrew, too. So I don't I know. I got about 30 seconds here. Give me one thing, one spending cut you guys are going to make or propose. Well, I think the spending cut to reduce the size of the federal bureaucracy, uh, we could do that and probably save $35 billion if we began to put some hiring changes in place and, and begin to rein in the government. Well, I hope you can, so. I'd not be the party you know as they claim you guys aren't. Well, I, I think you're going to be, uh, you will see on display our agenda in detail the minute we hit the ground running in January. Well, and let me say this in all sincerity, I am very happy for me that you <laughs> succeeded. So. It's good to be here, Amos. Congressman Eric Cantor, Virginia. Very happy to my program.